Hi, I'm doing a, 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 an acrylic. I haven't done a how-to acrylic for some weeks. I started it, but I've dropped my brush in, in, in my fresh paint and it's uh, made a bit of a mess. So I had to stop the video and restart it. So colours, a couple of yellows, yellow ochre, uh, cadmium orange, cadmium, cadmium red. Is it cadmium? No, it's not cadmium red, it's crimson. Oh, it's, uh, oh well, it doesn't matter. Uh, some ultramarine, burnt sienna, burnt amber, black and viridian. I might probably not use all of them. Uh, let's get that cadmium, that's a cadmium red. I'll have to move that over. You get used to it working in a certain way. The colour's always in the same position. I, I work the same way with the watercolours. With the exception of the green, I don't use green in watercolour, but I, I do like it as a shortcut. Oh, plastic. That's off the, off the lid. These are the, the Wilkinson's 200ml uh, tubes for £1.50, which are very, very good. Got loads of them. Every time I go to Wilkinson's, I, I stock up. Right, okay. So this is my river waddle, it runs from Croydon to the Thames, it's 16 miles long overall. Um, with some friends, we ride, we ride along here every, every week on Tuesday morning. And we do from Wellington to, to Merton Abbey. And we have a cup of tea and then we, we, we uh, come back. It's nice and slow. So. I like to to put in my trees first. I'm not I'm not copying this or anything. I'm making it up on experience, from experience. But I want to just put in some some greens. I use mainly mainly uh, greens with made with black, black and yellow, and put the uh, sky in afterwards. So I just want to build up a bit of a bit of a colour, a bit of autumn colour. A bit of orange. In here, look. I'll give one side dominant, one side less lesser so. So the river's coming down here. And we can put a bit of a bank. And there, there are, there's a bit of the Ravensbury Park where a, a huge piece of, I think it's a willow, has fallen into the river, into the river and has made a sort of an island. It's very, very attractive, but I'm not sure if I want to actually put it in. But it's just painting a river scene. So keep your brushes dry, uh, clean. And I'll put in a bit of, a uh, bit of, Bit of bit of water reflecting the sky. Imagine I'm standing on a little bridge across the river. It's not a not an Amazon River or Ganges. It's a, just a little chalk stream, really, which is very very lovely. Right. Okay. Let's uh, put in a bit of sky. Today the sky is very bright, it's cold. So we'll have it a bit blue, a little bit red. I like to paint down to the trees and we can keep going from one to the other, from going over one established uh, mass and then going back over it the other way. It seems to have an impact. And we can just just drag over. That's a bit bit wet. Now I'm going to build build up the trees. Acrylic dries very quickly, as you know, for those of you that use it. So let's make a nice lot of lot of uh, of autumn green. So we'll have some burnt sienna, some yellow, bunch of yellow. I will put in a 
Put greens in this as well with the black. I'm just a bit of blue with that, so we get a, get a nice shadowy green. For the oil painters of you, um, have a look at Michael James Smith. I've mentioned him a lot of times. I used to, I used to exhibit in the same gallery as him in Oxshot, Surrey, the Webster Gallery, which for that is closed now. But uh, a fantastic technician. A great, he could do oil paintings like photographic copies of landscape, English landscape. It's magnificent work. And he shows how to do it. And he, he's using part time lapse and part uh, real time. I, I can't do all that. That's beyond me, the ability to do that sort of editing. And but we're all different. We all paint in a different style. Makes the world go round, doesn't it? Right, let's get some. Greener colours, deeper. I'm going to put some blue in this bit here, make it nice and light like bluey green. I use a bit of viridian for that. I just use a bit of viridian in that. You should get a lot of darker green, shadowy. Greens with the leaves turning to a sort of a autumny yellow. A lot of um, burnt sienna. Right, let's let's try a mauvey type, which I like. Is it's viridian mixed with a crimson. You can get some lovely, lovely dark shadows with this. Oh, there's a light shining on that from my north window here. Let me show you. A big window there. North facing. And I've got two large, larger windows. Got a washing area there. Okay. So I've got plenty of light. I've had to pull the blinds down on the, the left side of me where the sun is starting to to come through because we put the clocks back in the UK now for winter and and as the winter progresses the light gets the sun gets lower and, and I have to use the blinds to keep the sun off of this. Right okay. Keep the brush clean. We'll do a bit of that background now which will be a sort of a bluey green. So, um, bit of ultramarine, a bit of white, just to give a bit of an impression of distance. Nice lot of colour in there. Just take some of that sting out of that viridian. Viridian is a beautiful colour mixed with white. Right, let's get some some nice yellowy leaves on. You know, that little bit. Now, nice shadowy colour. So try the, the, the if you've got alizarin crimson and viridian, just use it 
as a, as a dark. I used to use it a lot in oil, and in conjunction with fast drying linseed oil or alkyd. I'll get that. that mm, no, let's get some nice lighter colour in here. It's good making things up. You're not um, dependent on on copying. See, so you have to put light against dark all the time. Put that island in coming down here. It's not really an island. It's just a huge branch that's grown up, and, and because so much of it's in the water, it sort of regenerated itself. And as this dries, you, you can drag over it. Right, let's get into this here. This is a bit, bit of bit of banking and catching a bit of light. Oops, catching a few stray hairs as well. Catching the light. But I want that darker. Oh yeah, gone down too far. Oh, that's the bank, and that's coming across here. Almost goes all the way across the the roof. It's about, I suppose, it's about 30, 40 feet across from here, but only because it's shallow. But we're very, we do appreciate it. It's such a beautiful thing. But your know, bows are always tipping stuff in rather than take it to this clip. It's costing so much for the councils to for, for landfill or, or for disposing of builders' rubble and stuff that um, disreputable people are dumping it in this river in the roads. The councils are charging so much to get rid of it that they, they can't afford it, and it's costing them more in the long run. Right, and that is that is coming on. We've got some nice sort of pleasing shapes in here. I right, get that nice and light there. I'm using lemon yellow. Just dragging over this. So I add a bit of red to that, a bit of orange. See if we can just give an impression of more autumny leaves coming in here. I'll do more to that sky in a minute. We're standing on the bridge that I took a photograph from, which I, I might show you. But I don't see why you need to see it, because I'm just making something up based on, on an experience, really. Um, we saw five very large carp, like submarines, going under the little bridge. Lovely. See that? Right, let's do a bit of bit of nice just get that over the over the edge. Oh, 
stuff. Just dragging over, there is some air, come back into the, into the, the trees. Sorry if I'm barking you now. I'm going to go back over some of this, but I just want to just put the air in. That's a bit wet there still. I'm going to get a bit, bit bluey. I'm going to throw that back a bit. in the autumn colours. No, look that dry a bit. Let's put in some some of that river. These brushes are Pro Art varnish brushes. Over this, I can drag some reflections. some more shadow back in in these areas now so back to the viridian and the crimson It's a bit wet. Alright, put some nice light, yellowy. Just dragging this over there. and when that dries I can go back and drag more over it.
Oops. Put some colour in down here. Let that dry, that's got a bit awry there. Uh, that, that there, there's a bit of a line down there. Right, back with the crimson and the verid. More viridian in it. And they're building up this impasto surface. Right, I'm getting some dark, darker green now. I'm going to mix that with that alizarin and the viridian. Just a good bit of variety in this area here. of the blue, that background, blue. Well, it's sort of a darkish, a bit of variety in here. That's got a bit lumpy there, with the paper. I, I sometimes put it in uh, masking tape, so I won't take it off, I've got a nice border. Right, get some more reds in there now, ready greens. Put some little bits of uh, branches in as well. There's another brush here. Oh. Make it all nice and light now around the edges of these trees. Nice and soft. It's a line down there. So let's have a darker green, a bit of black I think. Red, warm the green up. There's not enough variety in there, so I'm going to go back with some lemony yellow, a bit of white, just to lighten it even more.
So we've got some dark, darker greens in here. So I'm just, uh, just to get some variety. to me sort of colours in. It's a bit of red, bit of sienna. Right, let's go back over that uh, water. Just using a basic sky colour. Looking down here, you're looking at the reflected sky rather than there. It's above, you're looking down, so it'll re reflect what's above. Plenty of colour in there. Okay. Uh -huh. It's coming on, I'm not I'm pleased, or not pleased with that. Where's my rubber? So, right, let's put in a bit of a bit of water. I'm just going to just dilute it a little bit. A little bit of fiddly work here yeah, on those little trees if they show. Try a bit of lighter yellow. -y. Sure, that's the right colour, but Mix up a grey. Still like that. It's got a bit, a bit heavy. So we're going to put the branches in light because we will put them in dark. If maybe you can see them. They won't be any contrast. Yeah. 
it's quite I'm not going wrong there. I'll have to paint over that a little bit. The masterpiece is taking a little bit longer than uh, watercolours. Oh, I'm just going to change that a little bit. So you can do this quite sort of quickly. Oh, it's a little bit of stippling. Bit of red in it. I'll be a bit of simple, keep you out of trouble. Right, I'm going to put in some reflection now. From through this here. We can put in some sort of reed type. Okay, well, um, that is uh, quite reasonable, yeah, I think. Right, I'm going to put a bit of a lightish cloud in that sky. Touch of red, touch of ochre. reason for that. Remember clouds aren't white, they've got a lot of colour in them. And the reason is, I want you to just show it. Right, okay, so that's about all I think I can do on that. Um, I'm going to put it in a mount, but let's take off all this stuff and see what we got. So this is a how to paint a river scene, but using blocks of colour, blocking in rather than trying to show every individual thing. And my style completely contrasts with Michael Smith's. But have a look at his stuff. He's got some lovely stuff on YouTube. Oops. All right, let's just uh, pin that there. Pin that off there. All right, I'll put a mount on it. Um, So there we are, let's uh, find a clip. The thing is, when you jag something, with, or you hit something, and something moves, you can't swear online. Uh, we have to behave ourselves. Right, there you go. 
Now, because I'm dragging over the trees, I'm not saying realistic, but because I'm dragging over, it, it gets a pastel effect. And I'm working on the watercolour paper, which is his Fabriano. It was a new sheet of Fabriano. Uh, 130 pounds. It doesn't really matter. It was. I primed it both sides with PVA glue, and this side with, a, with an additional colour, ground. Um, but I think that is a very simple picture. It, it, they do take longer to do the watercolours because you can cover so much ground with, with wet in wet very quickly. But these are memories of my local. Uh, River, uh, many many pleasant hours have been spent with my mates, uh, looking at the fish and the birds, and we all see things differently. But I hope you enjoy that. Have a go at these things yourself, and don't throw your failed watercolors away. Use them for acrylic or oil painting. They're they're, they're great surfaces. They're very durable. They will last hundreds of years, provided they don't get damaged. But by sealing them with PVA glue, it makes them waterproof. And that'll certainly be waterproof when that lot dries. So there we are. Uh, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.